Hi guys, today we're going to talk about the negative law of exponents. So the purpose of the negative law of exponents is to further simplify expressions that have negative exponents. So for an expression to be considered completely simplified, we normally don't want to see any negative exponents. So this law here helps us change them into positive ones. So you may have seen this already. The law is usually stated like this. X to the negative nth power is equivalent to 1 over x to the positive nth power. So I'm going to show you some simple examples to start with of how to apply this law. Then I'm going to prove the law to you because I think it's important to understand proofs. And then we're going to go to some more complex examples. All right. So um, the law is telling me that if I have a negative exponent, like I do in this example here, all I have to do to make it positive is really write the reciprocal of it with a positive exponent. So one over now notice that the base doesn't change, right? X stay the same, so my five is gonna stay the same, but that negative three is gonna become a positive three. So five to the negative third is the same as one over five to the third. Or if you wanna simplify even further, right? We can evaluate the denominator and we can say this is one over 125, right? Because five times five times five is 125. So either of these would be correct. Um, let's take the second example, three to the negative first power. So again, I have that negative exponent, just like the negative n here. I want it to be positive. So I'm going to change it into one over three to the first power, right? The positive one, or more simply just written as one third, right? Because three to the first power is just three. And now this last example, there's just one little thing about it that makes it different from the others. We have to keep the base, right? We kept the five, we kept the three, and now we're gonna keep the negative nine. So the negative law of exponents does not change a negative base. It just changes the negative exponent. So I'm still gonna follow this law. We're gonna go one over, but now make sure to keep that base the same, negative nine. The only thing that changes is that negative second power is gonna become a positive two, right? So it's one over negative nine to the second power. Or again, since I, Continue to simplify here. Let me do the last one as well. Negative nine squared means negative nine times negative nine. So that's one over 81, right? A positive 81. Okay. So let me prove to you, um, there's a couple different ways to prove this law, but I'm choosing one method that is going to require me to start with the same problem at first. And I'm going to simplify this problem in two different ways. Okay. So let's start first with using the division law of exponents. So um, if you don't know that yet, you might want to go back and watch the division law of exponents. But I'm assuming if you're at negative law, you probably know division law. So division law says if I'm dividing with the same base, so my twos are the same, then I can just subtract the exponents, right? So I know that if there's no exponent here, that's really an invisible one that's there, right? Two to the first power is the same thing as two. So if I was going to use DLE or the division law of exponents, it would be telling me to do two to the one minus four power, right? I would be subtracting these two exponents. And so this would simplify to two to the negative third because one minus four is negative three, right? Okay, so I'm gonna leave that there for a second and box that off. Let's start over and let's simplify this problem now by expanding, by using expansion, the definition of exponents and what they mean, right? So the two in the numerator is just the two. So I'm gonna just bring that over with me, right? But two to the fourth power, um, which you already know, or, you know, if you watch the intro to exponents video, you now understand means that I'm using two as a factor four times, right? So two to the fourth power expands to two times two times two times two. Now, if I simplify by just dividing two divided by two is one, right? So in the numerator, I've got a one in the denominator, I have two times two times two. Well, I can rewrite that as an exponential expression because I know that two times two times two is the same thing as two to the third power, right? Okay, so let me stop there and here's what I want you to realize. If I started with the same problem and then I simplified it using proven accurate mathematical methods and I ended up with two things that look seemingly different, these two seemingly different expressions are actually equal to each other, okay? So if you simplify an expression two different ways that are that are mathematically sound, and you end up with two different looking things, those two different looking things must actually be equal. So two to the negative third power must be the same as one over two to the third power, all right? So just a little proof, and now we're gonna get into some more complex examples. So 
I've got two over x to the negative fourth power. Okay, so the first way that I do this might look a little bit complex. I just need you to stick with me and then I'll show you a shorter way, all right? So if I follow the law that we just went through, um, the two is just gonna come on over because it doesn't have any negative exponent or anything, right? So it's gonna be two divided by, but now if I apply the negative law of exponents here, then x to the negative fourth becomes one over x to the positive fourth, right? So I know this looks ugly, just stick with me. So this is two over, and then I just applied the negative law of exponents here. So x to the negative fourth became one over x to the fourth. Now this is a division problem. So I'm gonna rewrite this as division, okay? I'm gonna rewrite it as two divided by one over x to the fourth. And now if you know how to remember how to divide fractions, dividing fractions is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal of the second factor, right? And now multiplying fractions is just straight across numerator times numerator. So two times x to the fourth is two x to the fourth. And one times one is one. And I'm not even gonna write that here because anything divided by one is itself. So we get this. And I want you to look at the green that we started with and the blue box that we ended with and think about what you can do that would let you never do any of this again, okay? Because there's definitely a shortcut here. So you don't have to do all of this that I just did. How did we get from this to this? So what you might realize is that the negative law of exponents, another way of looking at it, is that all you have to do is move the base that has the negative exponent to the other side of the fraction bar and then make that exponent positive. So I'm going to repeat that because I feel like that's probably the rule that you should be following in its simplest form. Move the base with the negative exponent to the other side of the fraction bar and make the exponent positive. So if that base that has a negative exponent is in the denominator, then when I say other side of the fraction bar, I mean the numerator. If it had been up here in the numerator, I would say move it to the denominator. So you move it to the other side to make it positive. So the two stayed where it was, right? Because the two doesn't have a negative exponent, so it doesn't move. However, the x to the negative fourth had a negative exponent. So to make that positive, I have to move it to the numerator. So then it's just going to hang out next to that 2 that's already in the numerator. And 2x to the fourth would be the simplified version of that. All right? So let's watch that kind of concept apply to different problems. 1 over 3 to the negative second. So I want to simplify this. Let's follow what I just said. Move the base that has the negative exponent. So what has a negative exponent? The 3 does move it to the other side. So right now it's in the denominator, meaning the other side is the numerator. So we're gonna move that three up into the numerator in order to make the exponent a positive two. Now I don't need that one the same way that I needed the two here because one times anything is just itself. So in this case, I don't need to write the one. You can write one times three squared if you want, but it's just unnecessary. So one over three to the negative second is the same thing as three to the positive second or nine if you want to write as that, okay? In this example, what has a negative exponent? Only the a, right? The a has the negative exponent, so let's move the a. It's in the denominator, it's gonna move to the numerator. Again, there's a one up there, I don't need to write it anymore because a to the fourth times one is just a to the fourth. Now that b to the sixth, don't move it because it doesn't have a negative exponent, so it just stays exactly where it is. So this purple expression simplifies into this, a to the fourth, over b to the sixth. So one more time, we move the base that had the negative exponent to the other side of the fraction bar, and we made the exponent positive. Anything else stayed where it was because it doesn't have a negative exponent, so we don't apply the negative law of exponents. Let's do a couple more examples. x to the negative second times y to the fifth. So what has a negative exponent? The x does, so the x needs to move. Well, where is the x now? I know it looks like there's no fraction, but remember when there is no fraction, I really could write it as something over one, right? So it's in the numerator. These are both in the numerator right now. So if I wanna make a positive, I need to move it to the denominator. Now that y to the fifth does not have a negative exponent, so don't touch it, leave it where it is. That y to the fifth is gonna stay in the numerator over that x to the negative second, in order to make the exponent positive, it needs to move to the denominator. So this will simplify to y to the fifth over x to the second, okay? Last example, 7a to the negative third. What has a negative exponent? Only the a, okay? The seven does not have a negative exponent. The seven, if anything, has an invisible one right there, right? The only way the seven would also be part of the base is if I had it in parentheses. 
And if you're confused about that, please make sure you go back and watch the intro to exponents video to understand the difference. But in this expression, only the A has a negative exponent. So only the A will move. The seven is gonna stay right where it is. Don't move it, it doesn't have a negative exponent. The A to the negative third, however, needs to move down here in order for me to make that three into a positive exponent, all right? So I've got some practice problems for you like always, but today, instead of writing the answers in the description, I'm actually gonna reveal the answers in a second because it's easier for me to write fractions than it is to type them up. So pause the video. You have eight examples here, give it a try. And then I'm gonna take this paper off and show you all the answers, okay? So here's all your answers to the eight questions. If you're, you don't have one of these and you're having a hard time figuring out why, as always, just put a, a comment down and I will try to help you out, all right? Good luck with the negative law of exponents.